Hey guys, what is up? This is Philbo, and I recently saw this video come out. It's called My Thoughts on Undecember. Is it pay to win? It's by Zizarin, and if you don't know who Zizarin is, he's basically a Path of Exile giga chad, and really good dude. I watch him actually play PoE on occasion, and he's got some really good insight. He'll play some other games as well sometimes, so I enjoy watching him. So thank you, Ziz, for taking the time out to check out Undecember, because I'm pretty sure he did a review on Undecember like a couple months after it came out in 2022, maybe like right after it came out. So thanks again for taking the time. Me, I'm Bilbo. I have been playing Undecember for a I don't know, about 2,000-ish hours over the past year or so since the game came out. And I've got a pretty good understanding of the end game and the pay to win that's within the game. So I'm curious to see what Ziz has to say, and I will be adding to whatever he says or clarifying. So let's go ahead and jump right in and see what Ziz has to say. In here with another video, and this is going to be a game review of a game I have previously reviewed, Undecember. A lot of my viewers started messaging me saying that they've removed a lot of the monetization. I think at some point they said something, oh, they removed all the monetization. I'm like, I don't, I suspect that's not true because the game itself was quite fun when I played it. And my biggest point of contention was the monetization was really bad. Not Diablo Immortal level bad, but enough to not want to make me want to play it as a regular ARPG between leagues. But now that I'm done playing PoE for this league, I was like, you know what? Let's do some other stuff until Diablo 4. So it is a cross play game. So it is actually a mobile game as well. You can play. Yeah, actually, when I first started playing the game, people were telling me that it wasn't pay to win. And after playing for like a day or two, I, it, I started realizing, oh, it actually is pay to win. But I didn't think it was super pay to win. So I kept playing, but I found out later that Undecember does have quite a lot of pay to win in it. Play this on your PC and then continue on your phone. We're going to cover everything, especially talk about the updated monetization, because that's the most important thing, in my opinion. That being said, the game itself is actually pretty fun and has a lot of cool ideas. And some of the monetization is similar True. to Path of Exile, so it could be worth it's giving a, a try between leagues. However, let's walk you through all of it so you can make Which an informed is, decision. And, and full oh. disclosure, guys, I do not like pay to win in games. I hate pay to win. I merely put up with pay to win in this game because I enjoy it so much. Oh, no. Wait, I'm actually dying. I'm actually dying. Oh my god. This is one of the there reasons like the no boss fights are actually difficult there. when I first oh, I'm actually started playing. Gonna die. Oh, I'm Too many games handhold nowadays. Oh my god, no. Just die. I started making a list of all the pay to win things that are in, in December. And, and when I first played, there were quite a lot of things. The worst thing when I first played was like each character to max out the inventory was $68, right? That's very expensive. Uh, and not similar to Path of Exile, where you can't enlarge your inventory at all. That's been removed, so like these are some of the steps I mean, like, they're moving in a good direction, right? Uh, but it is also sort of disconcerting that it, when it feels like a company is seeing how much can they squeeze out of the player base before they actually don't want to play the game. So, you know, the fact that they even tried something like that, kind of uh, a red flag in my book. But they have, like, maxed all the inventory stuff, everybody has that for free now. And from what I could gather, you can no longer buy jewelers, fusings, or chromes, like things to increase sockets, links, or uh, colors on items. You can't buy that in-game anymore for the uh, dollar stuff. So that Yeah, so what he was saying about the inventory space was a huge deal for so many people, myself included. When the game first came out, it was like 125 inventory slots, something along those lines. It was so little, such little amount of bag space that like every five to 10 minutes, you'd have to go back to town and dump your gear, sell off, do inventory management, and then get back to questing. It was ridiculous. So since I've come back, cause I took a, like a six month break from the game, they've increased the inventory up to like 300 and anybody who bought inventory space has uh, been refunded their diamonds, so. That's quite good. Um, there was yeah, a pay to win indeed. loot pet that you could previously only rent that is still in the game. However, in season three, they are making that free for everybody. Uh, and that's actually from a lot of people in my chat that I have regularly played on December, that it was enough for them to come back. So they're excited about that. I think that's worth mentioning. Yeah, that's a big deal. So the, the pet feature is the auto loot function in the game. And the pet must be purchased by either money, real money, or 
auction house currency, which you can grind and make auction house currency. Like you could work the auction house if you want, but it's tedious and I don't like doing it personally. So I know a lot of other people don't like it as well. So it's being removed. It's also going to allow players to sell within the dungeon. Uh, so you can sell and disenchant things from the dungeon with the auto or the pet feature as well. So that's a big deal. And if we go in game, it's basically. Oh, and that's being added, like he said, in season three, which is going to be towards the end of December. So there's something like 50 or 52 diamonds is one pound. So this one is like 14, 14, 14, like ish, right? Ballpark, unless I did math wrong. Uh, so the stash tabs are like 14 pound each. So that's like 16, 17 dollars, something like that. But around that vicinity. Yeah, they're, they're removing that, the uh, the petted ability, which you couldn't buy. You could only rent it, which is kind of shitty. Um, but yeah, they are removing that. The Zodiac Walker. So this is basically a subscription. Seven dollars every 30 days. That's fine, right? If that was a subscription fee for a game to be able to play it, I wouldn't have a problem with that, right? World of Warcraft paying 10 bucks every month to play it. Entirely fine. But for some reason, in my brain, it's worse if the game is free to play, but it has like $10 to get like the subscription. I don't know why that's worse. It probably shouldn't be because I'm, I'm, I actually quite like subscription, uh, monthly subscription, but for some reason it's worse if there does yeah. exist a free to play package, but either way. So, what so this eh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest back when I was younger and in college playing world of Warcraft, I would have really liked the option to give up like some convenience features to not have to pay the $15 a month. I would have really liked that, but you know, to each their own. The subscription gives you a uh, gift selection chest once a day. I haven't bought anything. I've been playing entirely free to play, so I'm not entirely sure what the gift selection is. Accelerates alchemy crafting time by 50%. This is quite big. Uh, maximum auction house registrations and trading post registrations. So you can only trade using money for rubies. You cannot trade for free, by the way. You do have to use money to, um, to buy things from other players. Now you can sell things that you find in the game and then use that. The money that's being used, yeah, that's true. it has to come from somewhere, right? If, if no player ever spent money, nobody could trade, if that makes sense. Yeah, the so, so somebody's always going to buy, I guess. Um, but if you want to trade in game currently, what players do is they'll list something on the auction house for the absolute minimum amount of rubies, which is 10 rubies. And... They're like, yo, I just put, I, I, you know, I put the shoulders up that you want. And it's usually like guildies who found something and they know that somebody else in the guild wants that piece really bad. And that person will go sit there and hit the refresh button on the auction house around like the 30 minute mark or something like that until they see the item pop up and then they'll purchase it. And that's basically how it works right now. So uh, not ideal. I wish they would take... I wish they would take the real money auction or the money auction house down completely and just replace it with like a gold trade auction house the community would uh, definitely receive that much better. The I should say the action RPG community would receive that much better. You could technically play the game and earn the, the currency, not these, but these, the red ones. Um, but somebody has to have bought them. Free costume dies, armor dies, daily free resurrections. And then I'm not quite sure what the black market items are. I haven't actually played that much this league. I mostly wanted to see like, what are the changes like in Monty Station? Again, because I do think the game itself is quite good. And at least for me personally, very surprisingly good for a mobile game. Because still in my brain, when I think mobile, I'm like Flappy Bird, Bejeweled, etc. So seeing stuff like this, or, you know, even Torchlight Infinite, that's more in line of what I think of as like mobile graphics. So um, yeah. Pretty impressed on that part but either way this 28 day subscription thing really not that bad i think that part is fine there is i'm not a big fan of this there is a battle pass that you can buy every two weeks now i don't think this will be substantial for a veteran player or an end game one but uh, for a new player i think this is going to be pretty big even the first thing is adds rune slots to a skill rune to change it into six slots so this is if you're a path of exile player basically the same as a omen of the jeweler so this is and and getting an omen of the jeweler for a new poe player would be pretty substantial right getting an early six socket and there's no sockets and links in this there's only one so it's basically the same as getting a six link really and there's like other things like that that i like it it definitely will give you some power Five hundred thousand gold is Okay, a few things to unpack here. So every two weeks, the Zodiac Pass resets and you can buy a new one. In my opinion, it is much, much too frequent. Every two weeks is a little bit ridiculous. 
maybe once a month would be a little bit better but to his to the point of it being a big whether or not it's a you know a big boost for somebody uh starting out i would say the very first zodiac pass when the season starts is going to be highly impactful it's probably going to save you maybe like a day's worth of grinding um after that the second pass will add a little value and then from there on it it might not be worth that much at all myself i didn't even buy the zodiac pass for like the first week and a half maybe two weeks of the season and it was fine it may have been a week i think after about a week i broke down and bought it but i didn't even need it and within the first like two days i got two six links and that was the hexarune he was talking about the hexarune essence uh, I, I got my first six link on day one, and then after that, it was like another day or two before I got the second one. And you really only need two six links in the game for your primary attack skill. And then if you are going to activate another skill, another spell from your primary skill, then you'll want a six link for that to maximize damage on those two runes. So those are going to be all you need. That, that's the only six links you, you need. And yeah, it will help out early on. Uh, that that's true so the first one most definitely second one not quite as much and from there on out i don't think it's a big big deal the gold he's talking about th that once you get to end game getting five hundred thousand gold's not like that's you know that's very that that's not much gold at all quite substantial as well that is a lot more than i have um earned in i think i've only played like 16 hours right now something like that I have 58,000 gold and I probably used 300,000. He must not it be does collecting seem like his probably, uh, achievements. And from, from what veteran players in my chat, they're really, like, I don't I don't know if they're veteran players, but they're saying they're. So let's just take them at their word. It, it doesn't seem very impactful for them and they don't mind this pay to win. I just kind of want to say what it gives you and you can make up your own mind because some people have the opinion that pay to win is only something where it gives you power or only something where it gives you an advantage over other people. I classify pretty much anything as pay to win. I, I would say stash tabs and PoE is pay to win. I try to be very, very harsh on it because I feel like monetization in gaming is getting quite a lot worse. And that's why I wanted a big focus on this video to be about monetization. Now yeah, I guess if you can purchase something and it gives you an advantage over somebody else, whether it be a time advantage, a power advantage. Yeah, that, that could be classified as pay to win. Sure. Now, Even another at, thing, like, a, a and I've changed my opinion on this slightly, but the auction house, you that being said, certain levels of pay to win are much, much easier to digest than others. Like, there's a threshold. There's a threshold, man. If you pass a certain threshold, it's over. You could technically drop $50,000 and buy anything on the auction house. That's what I was saying. And this is kind of dis dis disingenuous. Disingenuous? Anyway, hard word for me. Shouldn't use it. Because there's not that much for sale. So this is sort of a dynamic problem. So let's search for every single armor and there's no filter for like level or anything like this. And if I scroll down, so this is like gloves, helmet, boots, body armor. And that was the total amount of things for sale. So while yes, you can technically drop, to be fair, to buy anything right now, I think if you buy every single thing on the auction house, oh, this one's pretty expensive. I don't know if it's actually very good or not. But yeah, there's not actually that much you could buy. So Don the Crown pointed out that like, yes, you can buy anything for money, but there's not that much listed. There's not that much listed because there's not like a whole lot of players in the game actually doing uh, doing the auction house. Uh, the game's population isn't near as large as it was when it first started out. If it were, there'd be a lot more on the auction house and the prices would be higher because when the game started out, the prices were much, much higher than those prices I was seeing just now. So it's probably as a result of uh, just low populations, people who are wailing hard. I don't know that they'd want to go to a low population game, though. I I'm not sure. This is also seemingly the only way to trade, though there doesn't seem to be like, you know, item to item trading or anything like that and this would be a problem the more stuff there is on the auction house so i think this is quite bad so i would love to see them remove something like that another thing is there is uh yeah, crafting and especially synthesizing house. runes is pretty important from what i Ain't understand in game place that they're pretty much always synthesizing and trying to get like runes that are like drop only etc you can pay to speed that up which i am inherently very against even in games like warframe and stuff like that anytime that you can pay to speed something up, the developers are always incentivized to make it worse when you don't speed it up, right? This is a very classic mobile game. 
technique to elicit payment from players by like I'm just gonna pay two dollars to speed it up it's only two dollars before you know it you spent 50 right and I'm very happy with the game trying to elicit like anywhere from like 30 to up to a hundred dollars from me like I've paid 130 dollars from Tarkov and I'm very happy with that so I'm okay with anything in that price range but whenever I feel like a game is trying to get like five hundred a thousand dollars out of me and is very very trying to nickel and dime me every step of the way I get very unhappy and again, like I said, monetization is getting so much worse in games, so I try to be very critical. Now, that, that being said, I have played for 20 hours now, completely free to play, and I have not even felt any modicum of needing to spend money. Some players have said, especially in previous seasons, that it was hard to play an end game without spending money. And a lot of people were That's saying true. that it is fine to play the end game without spending anything, except hey. for stash tabs. Now, this yeah, yes, is similar yes. to Father Okay, what he said is true. You can... You can easily play the game without spending any money at all. But I would say there are a few, like three stash tabs that I would absolutely have, to, like me personally, that I would absolutely have to have to play the game without wanting to break my keyboard over my head. Because the inventory management would be absolutely ridiculous without three of the tabs that I'm thinking of. So everything else, I don't think you need to buy those stash tabs i do even the alchemy uh desk thing he was talking about uh earlier i don't think it's a, a big deal I, I don't currently have the alchemy speed boost it's not a pain point for me so. so i can't fault that too much that would be very hypocritical of me i have no problem with stash tab monetization in undecember nor do i in path of exile but the fact that these other things exist are really really off-putting to me and it makes me not want to commit to stash tabs because what if i later start feeling like oh man i could just put five dollars in here and, and have a better experience and i don't want that if they didn't have the battle pass and they didn't have the auction house and the speed up mechanics i would probably regularly play this for one to two weeks every like poe season right when it dies down a little bit um because the game has a lot of things going for it that is really yeah. cool but i'm very very negative I about the one i want either. to get that out of the way first so that people have an idea what they're getting into i give the game a five out of ten pay to win another downside i kind of want to just get i think that that's pretty fair it's not super pay to win but it's not little pay to win either get all the Definitely. downsides out of the way before i start talking about good things uh, at least I'm not a big fan of the fact that the game has, it's not there, um, loads of like receive all, yeah, this, like, this is annoying. collect things. He's right. This is it, like it one is of my annoying. least favorite things. This is very, very mobile. So you do have to do that every now and again. Thankfully, they have a receive all button, but you do have to like. It's something that it almost it, like they give you an achievement for actually receiving the achievements. It's like they give you an achievement for literally everything it's it's absurd and so you're constantly collecting go and collect things and like figure out where they are and it is and nice when you need extra gold and like yep and then now i'll start talking about some of the upsides and some of the really cool things about the game something i really want to give it a lot of praise for is its skill system this is basically similar to what that we it, it's kind of similar to what we're going to have in path of excel 2. so we can go go to the rune enchant and let's say this is my bursting rune knight so i can put that in here and they do have like auto repeat settings and stuff if you want to like do it automatic and just set like hey i wanted to be a six socket don't don't stop until we get that gather minions so now i can like boom now it's two socket now it's two socket now it's two socket now it's two socket now it's four socket now like you know what maybe a four socket and this is in path of excel terms basically a four socket four link as well the rune link essence what it'll do is it'll move those so it'll move them around and then we have the chrome basically which will recolor them now the way that works is for example here i have quick cast which is a support gem so this like changes the way the gem works or the skill works and then here we have a active skill gem lightning chain lightning basically arc from path of exile um quick cast so i have faster casting with arc and then i have cast on cast which i love when games have i wish path of exile really had cast on cast uh, instead of like cast on crit and things like that because usually there's no spell on spell in Path of Exile as easily as it is here. So basically Got the way this works is I have uh, Frost Thorn, some sort of Ice Bolt is being casted when I cast Lightning Chain. So, you know, you can see that and I could have another like few damage before. support here, 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 here uh, and changing the way that works and then I could have another there. So, you know, you see there's quite a lot of customization there. This is one of the things that drew me into the game is that the way you build your character 
is so much fun with the rune board system here. And I can tell you that the rune board is kind of like a thumbprint. It's like your thumbprint. There's no two thumbprints that are the same. There's no two rune boards I've ever seen that are like exactly the same. There's just everybody has their own little flavor going on, very unique. And uh, it's it's a, it's pretty exciting actually to even go through the leaderboards and look at everybody's room boards and see what they're doing. The ones who don't hide. So uh, I love this system. I really enjoy it. I'm glad Path of Exile 2 is going to be doing something similar to this. I'll be really excited to try that out. And that's just for that one skill. And then I have a summon here and then my summon, and this is the one I'm like currently using to clear. And honestly, it's doing carrying me pretty hard right now. So I have additional poison damage, multi-shot, minion speed, fine weakness. And the fine weakness is linked to both bursting rune knight and um, my poison arrow abyssling. And then uh, additional fire damage is on my bursting rune knight too. And I could technically get like minion speed or another, another support gem down here. Uh, and I could easily just move. Oh, I can't move in the screen. I could move the teleport down here to make some more space. So you have some cool customization here and later in game you can unlock these side slots there. Unlike Path of Exile, skill gems don't level up. You actually have to level up skill gems yourself. It's called Rune Growth. So it'll cost these uh, earth elements. I think there are others as well that you can get and you just choose which ones you level up. So and, and they'll be based on your stats and stuff like that as well. Other things that are quite cool, this is a little bit similar to Grim Dawn. You have stats in the middle, so this is very, very, very basic deck strength and int. So I might want like a little bit more life, a little basic. bit more int. This is also for like leveling gems. Maybe I'll need some dexterity for some gear. And um, then we have the Zodiac system. So it starts and you have to choose a talent one system, level basically. one skill, right? Or one level one Zodiac. So I went for minion and once I've put five points in here, I unlock level two. Now, I could have chosen the other ones too, which is, you know, caster stuff or uh, attack stuff. So, you know, you always have a choice in each one. There will always be minion things in each Zodiac, and there will always be uh, caster or attack stuff in each one and totem. So, yeah, one thing about this is it, it, each one of these little nodes has trait points, like many trait points within the node here. So like this is going to have its own set of trait points. This is going to have its own set. This is going to have its own set. And you pick enough within each to be able to progress further on. And it seems like a lot at first. But once you dig into it, it's pretty straightforward what the obvious choices should be. So. Oh, you move through like that. Now I'm at level six is the last one I've taken. And I have no skill points left to place. And then I unlock basically the ascendancy. Whereas uh, I went for Darkness, which is yeah. plus one Abyssling summon count. And then I got Overpower, which if you I understood it right, them. Overpowered really minion builds. Oh, like you can't crit baby. as much. Yeah, so this is like a specialization. You choose one of the specializations. This is where you do have to think a little bit more than in the regular tree. You do a lot more damage. And then you go further here later once I have 45 points. So very, very similar to Ascendancy points in Path of Exile, which is kind of cool. Uh, and a decent system for that. It wasn't too hard to figure out either once you realize the way it works. Gear, it yeah, has a new system that's supposed to be slightly less complicated. Um, so I'm playing hardcore right now. There is a benefit to playing hardcore in this game. You get better drops and more drops. Um, they also have an origin mode, which I think you have less or more limited crafting. And it's supposed to be like a drop mode. So you can play with like the full intended crafting system, kind of similar to Path of Exile. A lot of people said it's better than Path of Exile, and I could see why because it's a lot more deterministic and a lot of people like that. Uh, uniques can also be legendary. Yeah, so the origin mode he was talking about, there's absolutely no crafting whatsoever in it. And it's it's just drops, gear drops. That's how you get all your gear. And it's what I've been playing the past season because sitting at the crafting station for an hour plus at certain times uh, can get old which means that they do have a few extra if you're you know if you're ocd about it like if you're ocd about your crafting it's got to be like absolutely perfect and yes crafting can take a very long time stats kind of similar to last epoch's legendary potential but i would say a worse version it's rather hard to tell what's a legendary unique and what's just a normal legendary uh, as a new player so that was a bit weird and it seems just it would be better just to split that so a cool thing with crafting is that you can like, like maybe there's give it some a things color. similar to essence i don't even know if i have those to this one 
There's yeah, it's this one. This that will just sense. guarantee any stat you want. Uh, and then the other ones will be randomized. And then this one, if I understand right, I can add that I want like I want HP, I want elemental resists, and it'll craft until it hits that. Oh, until it hits yeah, it's either. Like so now it had elemental automation resist. or crafting automation. And now it had HP. So crafting is actually a different system in this game. They should have called enchanting what she's what he's doing right now, crafting. And crafting the other system, which is basically imbuing certain stats with like an additional stat. They should have called that enchanting, but it'll it just is like what keep it crafting is. until it hits that. So, you know, you could technically um put like really, really high um and, and higher tiers too, and be like, this is this is all the things I want, and then it'll Keep auto crafting until you get that, and it is actually a pretty robust crafting system. It looks comfy. You can He's upgrade it to legendaries, etc. And there's like a lot of crafting orbs. There does seem to be a lot, but it's surprisingly not that complicated. So it has a automatic potion system similar to instilling orbs in Path of Exile. So I can have here the potion here is used when I'm 60% HP. The mana potion here is used when I'm 30% yeah, this is a mana. nice feature. And I don't think man, this he's doing a good job of going sort of through all the thing. features. So yeah, you have uh, potions you can use like that. It's uh, also, I can do movement speed elixir here um, that I can just use every now and again if I want, or I could use it manually. So, honestly, that is a, a pretty good system. It's made it feel pretty fluid. I haven't had many mana issues in this game. Gear has been pretty easy to figure Not out, yet. and so is my build and stuff. And there's quite a lot of different builds. Like, if we, we can go to the rune shop here. So, you have active gems, and then you have, like, you know, strength decks, intelligence gems, and then you have a lot of support gems, etc. And then there are different acts, and you can, similar to Path of Exile, buy different gems from different acts. And like I said, there are some drop-only ones. And yeah, um, right now minions are apparently very strong, and other patches there will be other things, right? It'll be like Stupid most RPGs with the different metas. Like Loads of cool boss fights and stuff during the campaign, and normal monsters have been complete pushovers. I've never nights. felt in danger from normal monster. I'm starting to get slightly squishier now at the end, uh, but I also haven't upgraded my gear much in like 20 levels, mostly been equipping uniques, I find. Bosses, however, I've had several close calls. I have not actually died yet, but several close calls to some of the bosses. So they're really, really cool. I do feel like it has really good impact and sounds and stuff like that. I've been like at a level that's fine for me. The loot here has been a little bit boring to find. Like legendaries and uniques are a little bit interesting, but at least the loot uh, at lower levels have not been that fun. Yeah, I'll say that loot is not that fun with when you're playing enchanting modes, but if you play Origin, and you're actually dropping anything that drops can be a potential upgrade for you it's much more exciting like if uh, a, le a, a legendary item drops or a unique drops while you're going through the campaign and origin much much more interesting i guess uniques would be certain uniques would be uh, you know good in any game mode but legendaries that drop or even rares can be a lot of rares can be upgrades in origin mode it's a much more exciting gearing experience, in my opinion, because I felt the same exact way when I first started playing on December. I didn't feel that excited when the gear dropped, but that changed when I played Origin. Now, I haven't tried... In fact, Origin, the way that Origin works, it almost gives me, like, Diablo 2 classic vibes, where you, if you drop, like, a rare ornate plate, you'd be like, oh, God, this might be an upgrade. I would actually game that myself sort of, yet. Uh, um, I don't feel like that's been that important, felt. because I have quite enjoyed the game itself, right? So I'm already quite happy with the game. And from what I'm hearing, uh, Don the Crown has been telling me loads about the end game. It has... One system that looks similar to like synthesis and like really really cool with maps and stuff and i think you have two different map systems and then you have a lot of different boss things and you have like a boss gauntlet that keeps increasing in difficulty it seems so there is quite a lot to do at the end game and a lot of it looks fun and some of it's supposed to be very difficult some things that are yeah, people some, haven't even done yet from what i'm hearing for sure um so that's pretty cool so uh, for end game there what he was talking about is the um the spire is kind of like a waves sort of a uh gameplay mode where you fight against wave after wave after wave and you get lots of gold um as a reward for it there's also uh raids so daily raids and either descent raids which you can go into with a group of people or guild raids which you go into with your guildies and those give rewards. Uh, some are more difficult than others. Some are loot pinatas. Some you actually have to do mechanics for. And then, you know, there's there's other things like void rifts. So void rifts would be just like a just boss fights. 
one after the other. It's like one stage after the other, and there's like, uh, I think there's like 99 bosses. There's like 99 stages you got to get through. I haven't even gotten through half of them this season. They get really, really hard. You'll have to fight like two, uh, three bosses at the same time sometimes, and you know they scale up. So you got to actually push your character beyond to be able to take on those next bosses and void rips. So, and then there's like your traditional mapping, which is like what you do, you're, you're doing farming. You're farming whenever you do your chaos dungeons or, or your mapping. So uh, that's just some things off the top of my head. Those are the primary end game, uh, game modes. And honestly, uh, it is worth giving a shout out to Don the Crown and go check him out and ask him more about endgame stuff. And he does play it a lot more. So go there for even more information and you Don can see him the, doing the endgame Chad content and things like that. Player, That'll man. be an even more informed point of view than mine. But at least the game is moving in a better direction. I still think they should remove some of it. Quite a lot of cool things about the game. Like a lot of different builds you can do. The campaign is decent. I haven't paid attention to the storyline at all. But you know, it, it just decent density and stuff. And it feels quite fun to play. If the monetization went a little bit better, I would like to see the monetization go down to like what I would consider a three out of ten or a four out of ten. Like I don't mind a game having like take. some things. What would it but take? It's like, I don't know. I just I really hate any speed up mechanics being in a game. The reason mm. for that is I feel like uh, the developer becomes very easily incentivized to make the non premium or the non paid experience worse. Right? That's always the number one bad thing in a game. If you're wondering why I'm so critical. Yeah. I'll continue to be very harsh against games. Thing. It is a lot better now. That's why I want to do, uh, try it out again and uh, see. But yeah, um, still has what I consider not ideal monetization. Very fun game. Uh, definitely not bad to check out if you're bored while waiting for the PeeWee launch. It is also worth mentioning that... Under I think that while there have been some things taken out to help the, mon uh, the pay to win uh, in the game... I think that there's still not quite as much, but almost just as much pay to win in the game as when it first started. And I'm just saying this just to be fully transparent, in my opinion. Uh, you can buy any piece of gear off of the auction house. You can buy almost any material to help your character out, like increase rune growth, get uh, gold, more gold. All this stuff can be purchased purchase off the auction house if other players list it. There are certain things that used to be able to buy without any limits on, but now things are just being put on the auction house. Like you can buy any essence you want just about to help improve your character. So I don't think that the pay to win situation is that much better personally. That's just me personally. And I know there's going to be some undecember players who are like, yeah, you're, you're, you're full of it. No, bro. Come on. If people can buy almost anything they want off of the auction house, then that is some serious pay to win. And I'm willing to admit it. I don't like it. I wish they would change it. So I just had to put it out there. That's my opinion on it. December has a like root kit that it installs on your PC, which a lot of people don't want, right? It's basically an anti-cheat and it gets a lot of access over your PC. Now, this is similar to a lot of other games you play, like Escape from Tarkov, Apex Legends, uh, Lost Ark. Valorant, etc. So, you know, probably if you're okay with those games, then it's probably not a big deal. But if you don't want to root get on your computer, completely understandable. So either way, I hope you guys enjoy me checking out games like this and, and reviewing them. And uh, just in case somebody asked, this was not sponsored. I haven't been sponsored by them. I got sponsored, but that was when it was absolutely fucking garbage and not worth playing at all. <laughs> uh, and it's at least getting better now. So thanks for watching. Let me know any feedback on my game reviews. And let me if you liked the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do. Hey. Thanks, Ziz, for taking the time out to check out Undecember again. Really insightful. I think for the most part, you were pretty spot on. Your viewers seemed to know what they were talking about. Uh, I still think, personally, think that the game is fairly pay to win. Um, but it's still a really fun game. So even though, I, like I said earlier, even though I don't like pay to win, I'm willing to put up with it in this game because I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. All of the content in the game can be done without spending a dime. It doesn't, like, there's nothing you can't do. There's no paywall, so to speak. So, uh, now, if you've got to be the number one person on the leaderboard, then that's going to bother you. It's going to bother you that somebody could purchase power and basically uh, exceed you on the uh, 
uh, leaderboard simply because they bought their gear or improved their character with certain essences that they bought off of the auction house. So that is just my, my feelings on it right now. Super fun game. If you're okay with other people potentially buying things and you just want to enjoy the game for what it is, by all means, go ahead. You're going to have a good time. So that is all I've got. Thanks again, Ziz. I will catch you guys later.